Yep, there we go. So now we'll just bring this up to the center and zero it. handy having a light, a strong light behind you. In fact I've got two. I've got one shining from this side and one shining from that side. And with the, the light beams can join, I think that's the right word, um, you can actually bring the tool down and you know exactly by the shadow, uh, when the shadow meets the tip of the tool, the tool is just just touching the uh, material so you can actually zero it there. Um, so I don't think there's any real need for any super duper zeroing device. Although I normally use a piece of paper. Okay, so we will do the Y and the X there. And we'll lift the tool up. And we'll... It really doesn't matter where this uh, inked... Uh, print is on the tube because that will just wipe off with um, some, if I can remember the chemical name of the stuff, I'll let you know in a minute when I find it. And of it. course the chemical is called acetone. Um, I use that uh, a lot actually when I'm working with uh, Kevlar, which I do a fair bit of work with now. Um, and I found that it just wipes this inked uh, print straight off plastic, which is very good. So there's a useful tip. Okay, I've altered the um, A-axis or rotary axis um, motor parameters. Now in this case uh, it's been altered to 0 0.009. Uh, now that is millimeters or fractions of millimeters per pulse. Uh, normal uh, setting is uh, 0 0.001253125. Um, so yes, that could, so 0 0.009 corresponds with a uh, 90 millimeter diameter um, round piece of work. But uh, now that is this machine with uh, these um, motors. Now your machine might be different. Um, it's up to you to you know sort of have a play around and try and work it out for yourself but it's not terribly difficult. So uh, we'll start the program up now and um Sometimes these programs do really peculiar things and you really don't understand why it's doing it or it does it. But uh, invariably it all turns out okay in the, in the end. So I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, I just stopped the program and uh, restarted it um, because I was not happy at all of the way it was uh, cutting. Um, and what I think has happened is the tube must have go oh. up. Oh, well, I've just done it. Um, so yeah, you can see the result here that uh, I am just was not happy with, and as you just saw then, um, yeah, I've dropped the clanger. It's my fault. Um, the, the tube is actually loose on here. I hadn't tightened this up enough. So, just a matter of 
tightening the tailstock up, locking that up, and then it becomes firm. So, sorry machine, it was my fault. So we'll we'll put a new piece in and give it a try. That just goes to show that we all um, have our stuff-ups. <laughs> Hopefully I don't get any more. requests of uh, about this. This is the uh, Hogwarts uh, lithothane that I I did uh, about a week and a half ago now. Um, everybody seems to want to know what material this is. Um, it is the best material I have found to actually make a lithothane on and this is called acetyl. Now I'll put the data up here and details if I can, just here. Um, it is very, very good material. It's fairly inexpensive. Uh, it's commercially available. Uh, all plastic um, engineering companies and stockists, stockists will stock it. Whether it's called a acetyl in your region uh, of the world, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, plastic engineers will probably know uh, the brand name. So yeah, this is the best stuff for lithothanes. Um, but I think you'll be, you might have been surprised about uh, a piece of grey super sewer pipe uh, with uh, this lithothane on that I previously showed in this video. And um, the next one that I'm that I'm actually cutting now at the moment. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised about that. The machine is in the background now. Okay. discover oh dear uh, it's broken through so uh, you have to well what I actually found out was that uh, this round tube isn't round uh, now it's a what it's a two no it's a 1.75 uh, millimeter uh, to 1.85 millimeter wall thickness so it's not true all the way around and it's um, oval, it's not round. So when you're cutting out um, one and a half mil to leave, you know, roughly sort of half a mil wall thickness behind, uh, it doesn't add up, it doesn't work, as I found it. Certainly using wooden um, dowling, To actually hold it 
uh, in the A axis or the rotary axis um, is not the best material when you, you, you're trying to get um, accuracy within sort of uh, 0.25 millimeter. Uh, it doesn't work. So what you really need is, uh, well I've made these are nylon, uh, which is more accurate. Um, and what I've had to do then is get a DTI on the, the actual tube and pick the, the lightest part or deepest cut of the, the picture and put the, the lowest part of the tube or the pipe in that area. So when it cut comes round, uh, it actually doesn't pump, punch it through. And you use the ovalness of the tube um, to assist you to, to, to cut it. So it's working at last. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you the finished finish thing. As I have found it, uh, machining this very thin material, it's about the same as trying to carve a design on an emu end. You tend to end up with, well, a lot of omelette. And finally, three hours and twenty minutes later, we have a finished round lithothane. Uh, now all I've got to do is uh, make a base for it and put a light inside it and um, I'll put the end result up right after this. Okay, so this is what you can do with a couple of pieces of um, offcuts of wood. A simple light uh, fitting and um, a bit of cable with a plug on and a bit of old drain pipe. And the magic happens when you put the light on. So there you have a 3D lithothane. Not bad for a bit of old drain pipe. <laughs>